and a warm welcome to the panel. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out uh, for uh, this discussion. So we'll try and go deep dive into some of the points uh, that uh, uh, have come up, you know, in the in the process of uh, kind of getting our CX approaches right. So just as a sort of an opening, let's kind of get into the deep dive. So I'd like to have a quick comment from everyone. I think uh, uh, the one thing that kind of maybe uh, our audiences here would want to know, and I'll kind of start with you, Shrichita, is <laughs> the lady's right at the middle, so she gets to <laughs> go first. Uh, so uh, what uh, typically are some of the seismic shifts that you have seen from a CX perspective? As someone who has been kind of looking at this in your organization, are they those top of the three uh, trends you can talk about and how have these impacted the CX investments uh, you know that you have kind of gone back and put your case or put your finger on to so go first please yeah so uh, so uh, credit B is a, a digital app organization right so uh, the ultimate aim is to build it a self-service platform and of course, then the communications play a very important role because uh, you want at the end of the day for the customer to complete the journey with the help of the self-service communications that you make. Um, I think, uh, see the entire idea is in the previous presentation, I think uh, we saw that, you know, how the entire history of communication went. I'll talk about, I think, last two years, uh, when we saw the entire financial industry, uh, like I had mentioned previously as well, that you know, being a completely call center heavy uh, uh, way of communicating, then of course, previous to that, it was field sales and, and with a personal touch point when we were trying to sell loans and then making it through a call and then SMS and communication. Then I think uh, multi-channel became a trend and uh, Today, the idea is to migrate from multi-channel to omni-channel. Uh, sounds very simple, but uh, the understanding is that how do we actually integrate the communication in a way that uh, we just don't communicate to the customer multiple times, but we use multiple methods at the right time with the right uh, form of accessibility and personalization to the right customer. And, and reach out to them so that they can have a smooth experience. Um, and, and the communication tells a story and, and they complete the journey in that way. Um, I'll give you an example, maybe, you know, not from the loan industry and, and tell you that uh, when we talk about the um, omni-channel uh, strategy and, and all that, uh, Amazon uh, is, is one of those IT uh, giants, right, which we, who we all follow. But at the same time, when they have created a complete uh, self-service and e-care solution platform, uh, at the same time, their uh, communication is rooted in a way that you end up with an assistance at the right time. Uh, they don't bombard you with communication in a way that you'll have to complete the journey yourself. Uh, if you need the assistance, they'll route it to you. So that's very important. You need to tap the customer understanding and personalize uh, the communications in a way so that you retain them for a lifetime value. Like sure, for instance, um, I think a lot of people uh, step in when you're stuck with the transaction also. I think that's also timely intervention. Absolutely. That's a great Absolutely. use case. Yeah, We like, talked about 60 SMS a day uh, to a, uh, any average Indian, right? And uh, imagine all of us reading the OTP SMSs at the same time. Yes. Yes, right. <laughs> that can get pretty, yeah, uh, intimidating actually, right? So, for instance, if I'm looking at an, uh, at least at a user from a user perspective, like suppose I'm stuck where while uh, completing an insurance policy transaction, right. Right. Uh, sometimes those interventions have helped me, you know, to complete. Not necessarily because I was looking for information. I think I was stuck at decision making. Yeah. And those interventions there. Why are you stuck? You know, those interventions. Somebody follows it up with a call. Or I get a notification over email saying, you are still in the process of completing trans. Right. So these kind of personalizations do help. Correct. You know, I think that's a great point you brought up. Uh, thanks for that, Shrijeta. Let me move this to Suraj. Suraj, uh, what have been the uh, kind of uh, uh, 
uh, shifts you have seen from a CX investment perspective in your organization and what motivated this decision, these decisions? I think that's an interesting question. Mm. So, uh, uh, we have two brands, one is Kisht and one is Ring. And uh, Kisht is more into giving personal loans to individuals and Ring is into uh, small merchants like retailers, wholesalers. We finance them for their working capital needs. And uh, what we have observed is in the fintech space especially, there are five important things that have changed uh, in the last two years, especially post-COVID. Uh, one would be the most important is collections, wherein uh, the kind of collections that used to happen pre-COVID are not happening now across the industry, including banks and NBFCs. So previously, I would say when a collection caller used to call customers, he would just say that I need this payment, sir. Uh, and if he says that I have a complaint which is not resolved, he would say, please call customer service, but you need to make the payment to me now. But now uh, there is a total reverse trend happening. At least what we are doing right now is, so if there is any customer who, is, uh, who has a grievance, uh, the collection executive stops the collection right away and he moves that case to the customer service desk so that they can uh, resolve it first. And also there is a soft calling team separately built. If the customer is not ready to make payment or is not uh, cooperating with the executive, rather than making any aggressive statements, it's necessary that he's moved to a soft calling team and handled in a different way over there. So uh, collections has completely changed. In fact, I would say that previously I used to hear customers saying that uh, a caller has spoken rude to me, but now I'm happy to see that customers writing that I have taken loans from 10 companies. Your company has been very cooperative. Please give me some more time, but I'm getting very rude calls from other companies. So that's has, that has worked for us in, uh, in terms of CX. Second uh, would be compliance. RBI has come out uh, with a long list of digital lending guidelines, which uh, every player has been compliant uh, by now. Uh, especially the key fact statement, agreements, what kind of disclosures have to be made, what kind of communication has to be sent. So that is a one big change that has happened. So now I would say most of the fintechs are in line with what banks are doing. Previously, the disclosures were very less to the customer. Right now, the disclosures are happening uh, much more than what is required. Third, I would say, is the communication part, wherein customers, uh, the kind of uh, communications that were made to the customers prior to taking the loan, after taking the loan, have increased now. So, And also the kind of communications that happen on the app, the UX part, what kind of disclosures have to be done, have increased. So third is the communications. Fourth, I would say, is customer resolution, grievance resolution, wherein uh, previously, if uh, cus uh, customers had to wait for around a week or two weeks for resolution, now it's happening in two days. As, at least with, customer, with companies who are very serious, they're resolving it in two days because they don't want RBI or someone to come to them and say that why it's not resolved. Yes. So that's where we are very serious about. And fifth, uh, but uh, it's not the less important one, it's the most important one, it's uh, fraud mitigation. Uh, with online lending, with more of online things happening, uh, a lot of frauds have come up across the industry. In fact, uh, I remember I was speaking to one of my colleagues uh, recently, there was a fraud with a lot of HDFC bank customers getting SMS for uh, KYC. So uh, even banks are not left out of it. So fraud mitigation is number one priority and I think uh, a lot of changes and updates are coming over there. And uh, these are the five factors I think have moved the industry. and. This is where customer experience is revolving right now, and that's our main focus, these five areas. So uh, this is where we feel that if we fix these five areas, customer experience has to be the best. Sure, it's interesting you brought up that HDFC SMS thing, you know, fraud mitigation, because it's very cleverly planted. The discerning eye would see that it's not coming from the HDFC bank automated messaging. It's coming from private numbers, actually. It's a personal number. It's a personal number. So obviously, the discerning eye would see it, but there is just so much of diverse uh, consumption to it that, you know, vulnerability, you know, just catches it. So that's a great point you brought in. I think, uh, Hitat, at this point, it would be good to bring you in. Uh, what uh, further would you be able to add on to what uh, Suraj just said? And um, what have been those uh, distinct uh, shifts in the way you've been looking at CX investments uh, from your point of view? What's changed over the last uh, 12 months and what's, what are you looking at currently? Sure. Mm. Thanks, Shantri. Mm. Um, so I think um, both of them have already covered a lot around fintech and what's happening in the finance spectrum. Mm. Um, and, and there have been seismic changes. Uh, but one thing that I think has been really very impactful for us has been, uh, we already had a unified journey across our, some of the products, uh, but just a couple of years back, we launched multiple products. 
and that's when we realized that when we are when you are serving different segment of customers with different products the context matters a lot right um, and a lot of movement within these segments and the products that's something that is very very uh, i i would i won't say tricky but it's very interesting to see from uh, from a marketer's lens now uh, what we have done is we have tried to figure out insights that can enrich our systems and can help us understand where the consumer is in what part of the journey and not bombard them with maybe like not 60 but uh, but not bombard them with over communication so that consumers suddenly piss off right so that's uh, again being marketers i understand that we all have to deliver numbers there are month end targets so it's it, there is a devils uh, this thing going in our head that let's press the button and send more communication uh, and that's okay that is the reality of the business but uh, eventually helping your teams eventually figuring out building systems that can enrich uh, your outsend uh, that, that can enrich what you are sending out to the consumer improving your efficiency improving whether this content is is being clicked more or not that is something that maybe marketers should strive for and that's something that we have been working uh, quite a lot on uh, that's one part of it uh, another part that i have seen is that off late um, and email has been one of the most uh, old channels but that's something that is coming up as a clear winner right and um, i'm not sure about a lot of other players in the market but we have started investing significantly on emails uh, we think that okay there are and i think emails are abused far more than sms's uh, but there is an art to it so if you have cracked that part uh, marketers can definitely deliver good value uh, consumers yet open a lot of emails especially in the banking industry because they want to know where my status is what is the status of uh, status of my transaction what about my money they want to know they want to get right messages from fintech players and finance players so these are some of the channels that have existed quite some some time but but just looking at the same problem in a different lens completely changes the game uh, and finally i think whatsapp is something that everybody is super excited about uh, because it has uh, in marketers terms magical open rates and magical click rates uh, but uh, obviously it comes with its own challenges of opt ins it comes with with its own challenges of um, how well are you community uh, communicating to the consumers so uh, there there have been some major changes at our end as well um, i think uh, one major uh, I, i won't say major change but something that is there on our uh, road map is how well do you understand the consumer and maybe send the right message at the right time an example to that is whether i can understand this consumer prefers english as a language or some uh, vernacular language uh, and what is the propensity of of a business reaching out to the consumer in their own language at the right time so that's something that uh, we are super excited about and uh, it's we have seen some decent results in our ab test sure so you're able to draw that distinction do you have data to distinguish the audiences yes, databases yes yes okay. yes so we what we do is we keep on running multiple ab tests okay so i have a certain segment i uh, let's say i have to uh, send an sms to them and we randomize it into two different segments and i know that okay this is one particular uh, messaging angle that i want to test out in just first iteration i know that the effectiveness of two different messages and you just need to repeat this process multiple times until you reach a certain pattern <coughs> right uh, obviously this can't be done at a very huge scale but you can easily pick up small samples and then populate your uh, learnings on the larger one uh, and this applies to every single channel that you can go ahead with uh, whether it is ivr whether it is a call center right call center teams can also be given maybe two different sheets to figure out that okay this is how you greet the consumers and this is how you uh, help the con grievanced con consumers right so a lot of intelligence can be built in from the existing processes i i just think that uh, it's a little bit hard and difficult to implement and that's that's where we are all in a rush to quickly uh, to quickly get our targets quickly get the results so we miss some of the hard parts i know it's a mad rush yeah <laughs> yeah but then that's great insight you know you're on you're at it you know it's a continuous yeah uh, absolutely and it's it's ingrained in our culture so we keep on testing um, everything sometimes what happens is if if something that has worked very well and it is still working well we are wondering whether it is genuinely working well or not let me try a negative uh, test on that and see whether it's keeping the dip stack very well or not uh, so that's that's how you find your winning horses absolutely i mean you're going against the grain of thinking you know why would you change a good thing 
right? Yeah. Yeah, great. That's that's a great point, Hitar. Dinesh, I'm moving the same question to you at this point, calling you in. Mm. Okay. So I think uh, what I have noticed uh, in the recent time from a customer point of view, customer is more aware now. Okay, he want to know things, but he want to know that do you know the customer or not first. Okay, so earlier when you talk uh, when you uh, think about you know ordering a product, you go to website and you go to app. Earlier you find that okay, okay you do not know the customer on website or app and you you still treat him as a, you know a different customer a different experience. Now he want you to treat a same customer across the platform. That's the major that I've seen. Second thing. Customer do not want to be assisted all the time. Because in that case, he want to reach. That alludes to your point as well. <laughs> so he want, when he want to know, he want you to reach out, else not. I've, when I work with angel broking and all, I've seen that cases where customer do not want to get a call from a call center agent. He want to open the account. He's well know how to open account, how to transact. Okay. Now, when we talk about other space, you know, like if I take experience from a uh, from a let's suppose a food industry, every day morning you start getting a grocery message from Swiggy, from Instamart. Okay, you order now, order now, order now. But does a customer actually order using your notification? Okay. Generally, a customer order at 9 a.m. in the morning. He will order by its own time. You don't need to you know push him for that. And I think this uh, worked for me in Tender Guard when I was talking with, at that time. We were sending out I think more than almost uh, 10 lakh messages in a day and we realized that there is no need for that. We moved down to 1 lakh and the revenue did not hit by a single rupee. So we realized that we need to understand that when a customer need to be sent out a communication and that happened when we realized that what is the behavior of a customer when he transact with your platform. Because that's the one area that oh, customer do not want to get spam now. Because that's the first area we have to be very clear about that and we have to reduce the communication. Second thing, he want across the platform same experience that I have noticed uh, in my experience. Third thing that I have uh, seen that majorly on these lines is that, again, you cannot hide the information. Because of these three things that I find earlier when you talk about, uh, you know, uh, when you go earlier and you want to send out a message, customer will not check, okay, and he will not give a shit about it. But now if you send a message and customer has not, uh, you know, given you opt-in, you'll get a try complaint coming right back to you. Okay, so I think now customer is very aware and he want to uh, he want you not to spam him but uh, you know give him the right information at the right time and let him take his own call and its own time that that two things that work that I have noticed in the recent time I think that's something we all have to learn and maybe adjust according to it sure sure uh, thanks for that uh, Dinesh uh, Parvati at uh, so your uh, conversations with customers I think one of the most big the largest challenge is to look at a seamless, unified experience. So A, is there that one-stop shop panacea for the CX journey? And what are the specific pain points that you have noticed during customer conversation? So you are the product person. You have these product conversations. <laughs> so give us your perspective, please. Absolutely. So we've touched upon a lot of these points here, right? So one thing that sticks with me and something that I have uh, you know, noticed as a pain point is meaningful personalization. It's, it's meaningful personalization that has empathy for the end customer. So it's not just about, I know your first name, I know where you work, it, that doesn't matter anymore. It's about uh, you know, your behavioral patterns, what was the experience that you had, what made you stick with the brand, why are you coming back to us? So those are the key metrics that really matter at this point. Now, in order to get there, right, how do we we, uh, you know, there are these brands that are trying to identify, and that comes to my second point, like where does this data lie? So um, we talk about the right message at the right time through the right channels. Now, in order to get there, we need to look at the life cycle journey of a customer, right? So let's, let's look at a click to WhatsApp ad that you've put up, and then somebody clicks in there for inquiries, and when it comes to the system, you maybe maintain all your prospects on a CRM, and now when it comes to onboarding them, you're looking at authentication through video, for example, if it's the finance space, right? And then eventually you have all these stages and you know where the customer is and what is sticking with them. You need these platforms to communicate and work with each other as well. And that's slightly more complex when we look at it, right? Um, so the third thing, if I could point out, I would say is in, in the presentation that Mauro gave, we, we saw the journey of communication. What has also changed is how frequently 
technologies are emerging, how many new things are coming into the market. So what happens is we need to adapt to them fast. We need to be able to switch when things work, don't work, or there's a better strategy. And you need that expertise of what works, what are the do's, what are the don'ts, uh, you know, what sort of templates work, what do these categorize, categories mean? We spoke about, you know, legislations. So all of these things are the challenges that I notice when I, you know, work with customers closely, yeah. Sure. So any specific instance you can recall which ha has been interesting in terms of uh, how you've been able to turn around a customer conversation? Uh, sure. So um, I think if you look at how our applications are, so... It's, it's not that you purchase or you interact with the CPaaS platform and you get everything that's there, but you also need data to come back from the business's customized solutions. So a lot of our customers actually have their own custom applications or platforms. They also use uh, you know, different CRMs or marketing automations, campaigning tools. You need all of this to come together. And in some way, we've built out integrations. Sometimes it's directly with their custom systems. They will use our APIs and get it out there. So this is... Uh, you know, um, low-code mechanisms that we have in place. But sometimes it's just products. We've already built out the verification or authentication journey for you, so you just plug it into your system. And more often than not, it's very specific to the customer's ecosystem. So we work very closely to understand what is it that you're trying to achieve and how do we get you towards that goal. So that, that's how we approach it, yeah. Sure, thanks for that, uh, Paruti. So, uh, Hitarth, I'll come back to you uh, at this point. So you were talking about being like a completely, you know, a digital banking, uh, you know, setup. So, um, A, how is uh, your CX tech work for you? What are the distinct hits and misses? You were talking about contextualization, you know, constantly kind of testing, you know, uh, if you are bettering your best. So what have been your hits and misses at this moment? If you can kind of walk us through some of it, you can be as candid as you can choose to be or divulge whatever you can. Sure. So, uh, in hindsight, a lot of misses, uh, but uh, looks like... That's good news for a start. <laughs> in hindsight... Hitarth is going to be candid. <laughs> yeah, in hindsight, a lot of misses because, um, see, uh, over the years, I've realized that uh, a lot of optimization can be brought in in the way you are trying to solve a certain problem, right? Um, it's not like just you have like five bullets to fire. There is SMS, WhatsApp, this, that. There are five other channels to reach out to the consumer with a certain message. And you just go ahead and fire all of them to maximize your output. What you, what you can genuinely do is, and this is where uh, we um, tried and we realized that we were investing a lot in some of the uh, campaigns, some of the segments where uh, we thought that SMS is a great channel. But then we saw that over the, over the few quarters, over the months, the click-through rates have continuously been dipping. Now, is there a parallel channel that can be implemented? So that's where what we did was we started ingesting some part of our insights as well that who are these consumers who are more prone to click on SMS and try and optimize over there? Who are the consumers who who are, uh, who are don't want to get a lot of messages as uh, Suraj was saying that a lot of over-communication also is not there. So a little bit of a better segmentation of your current target audience, uh, that's maybe one of the keys and uh, that is where uh, I think that this was a miss. A lot of, I would say, CPaaS platforms, marketing automation platforms, they do give uh, these these solutions readily available. Uh, and it's, again, uh, it's not the not a tool's uh, uh, mistake. It's the, it's the guy who's using the tool. They need to know how to use it properly. And that, and, uh, I would say, it comes over time. It comes after making a few mistakes. It comes after uh, firing a few misses, some, some of the wrong things. Uh, but once you've done that, I think... Um, a lot of uh, intelligence can be, and, and as Parvati was saying, a lot of intelligence should be able to flow in different systems. Because um, uh, if I have an insight from one of the place and I need to download a certain raw file and then put in data analysis and then take it again to another system, this is a very lengthy process. This is a deterrent in trying to do a lot of things that you are trying to do. But if systems can talk to each other quickly, if there are real-time updates that can be given to different systems, different universes, then marketer can actually try and do something uh, fantastic. Right? So that's maybe one of the myths, uh, uh, I would say. Uh, a few hits that I would say is that I've always been somebody who's been very close to raw data. Uh, and as a performance um, person, as a growth person, I think everybody who's hitting a send button on a certain Excel sheet for whatever kind of communication, they need to go back 
and check whether uh, they have done the right thing or not in every single campaign iteration. There needs to be a daily cadence that this is where my, uh, my campaign effectiveness has gone up or gone down or it's just held stable, right? And this is how over time you can improve it. Um, some of the hits have been that uh, we've been able to quickly um, retarget consumers in a very, uh, very interesting way. We know that, okay, this customer clicked on a certain communication and they've dropped off. And we know that in our mind, there is a hypothesis around pricing, there's a hypothesis around value, there's a price, uh, hypothesis around experience, and let's quickly like test it out in a very interesting way. And users genuinely uh, appreciate you, uh, you trying a little bit of a creative way of reaching out to the consumers rather than just repeating the same message again and again. For example? Oh. So for example, uh, I think it's a, and I, maybe a couple of panelists will also agree, uh, it's a highly abused um, uh, messaging that here's your available uh, uh, credit limit and go ahead and take the loan, right? Yes, uh, I agree. Now, <laughs> now it's easier to do, honestly speaking. But what will happen is, uh, see, a, a person will take a loan when they genuinely want to take a loan. You can't force it upon them, right? But what you can do is you can generally on your top of the funnel of the consumer's mindset, you can keep it ready that, hey, if you ever want to take the loan, I am the one, this is, these are some of the values, these are some of the things that will make your choice better, right? And just keep them warm. You don't need to convert them right away. You can just keep them warm, keep them revolving in a certain orbit. And the day they hit, they hit the need, uh, there you are. They, you are in one of the consideration sets for them to act upon. Uh, this is a very vague uh, example that I have given, but obviously we can go into depth of how the messages can be changed. Um, a lot of, uh, and, and now, in fact, I would say that with chat GPT, the dependence on your copy team to provide you a certain SMS of a certain effectiveness has really reduced a lot, right? And I would love to see maybe some of the CPaaS platforms integrate with ChatGPT so that while you are sending it, they can say, hey, the same messaging you can say in another man ma manner to the same customer and not spam the same guy with same messaging again and again, right? That's maybe one of the ways because we know that you have to communicate to the consumer to an X number of frequency for them to convert. You don't have to do it with the same message. You can do it with different message. Right? If it's a, it's about, we are about to end into a weekend, uh, you should be mentioning that, hey, we hope that you have a better weekend, right? Uh, marketers can use this context, and that is what I was telling about. Sure, yeah, I think that's interesting. This whole thing about how chat GPT can change the communications dynamic, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, interesting. Till it runs out of steam. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, see, I, I think it's it's empowering the marketer, right? There is a dependence on within the marketing teams also to their brand teams, to their copy teams. Um, there's somebody else who's hitting the button and there's somebody else who's writing the copy, right? With these kind of advancements, you are just bridging the gap between the two and just making it much easier to go live. So maybe we should uh, leverage it as uh, until it runs the steam. <laughs> sure, sure. So um, Dinesh, uh, moving the question to you. Uh, so you're also like been using, you know, some sort of a, a CX platform and stuff like that. So how exactly are you navigating the CX maze? I mean, so, so your hits and misses here as well. Mm. Is that fine? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I think I'll uh, say the same thing. Uh, we also have the similar kind of a case. Okay. Currently, to understand what platform to send to a customer communication is the most difficult part. Okay, I think with the, with the recent time with the CX platform, it come with a feature that you can understand, okay, where the response rate will be higher, be it SMS, be it WhatsApp, be it email. So first of all, finding how to communicate to customer. And there are misses because sometimes you think that you know better than the platform. And sometimes you decide, okay, I'll use a SMS and it may not perform that well. So, and uh, sometimes again, because I think a lot of time with for marketeers, our assumptions come in play more than a lot of time data. Because we, I think I believe that we use data, we learn, we read the data, but at the time we want to use our own uh, understanding over it. And that's where the major problem happened because sometimes we all have certain learnings over the years and that's something, sometimes make us to make mistakes. Because I think earlier when we want to reach out to customer, it was only SMS or email. And still we think that only. So I think. One thing that I find majorly a miss uh, when my team use communication is that sometimes they try to go with their gut feel instead of using what is the uh, what is the response rate being on certain platforms and what what kind of a platform being more uh, response driven. That is the one area. Second thing that I major find on hit side we do not experiment a lot. Okay, we I think I will say I am not like here right now. Okay, in my case 
I'm just joined the new company and it's, it, the process has need to be built in. And till now, I think the communication has been same for like years. So I think that building a, you know, a A-B test nature in the company and that's the, that's the area where major happened because right now, we started doing it, but right now I'll say it's more like misses because we're still trying to understand what our customer want to know or want to under, want to uh, get from us, and that's something is still a process going on. So that's there. But what works, uh, what been uh, majorly hits for that we understand. Okay, what kind of a communication work, and how your customer want to uh, you know want to be uh, you know uh, what do you call it contacted. Okay. So when, uh, you know, instead of uh, sending him uh, maybe a message, send him an email, give him a time, okay? Instead of calling the customer because you feel like there is a demo going to happen in the next 15 minutes, you call the customer, wait for it, okay? Let's wait for five minutes, let's see if he can join or not. And those where, you know, not pressing that button is what been a major uh, hit for me because that's where I'm like trying to control that you do not bombard the customer. And uh, on top of it, third thing that works is that, again, we are an omnichannel company. We started offline centers, and there are people coming online to understand the, pla understand the product, then they're going to offline center, again understand. And there happen that, you know, your communication is not right a lot of time. Your offline center is saying something, your online guy is saying something, and that and how to bridge that thing is, again, is the one area. And that's where the major, uh, you know, major challenge for me to figure out how to, you know, have that consistent across the board because in online space, we still believe in, uh, you know, pixels or maybe events to get the customer data, but in offline, the customer is actually in the office. Okay. So I think those were the areas where uh, we see, I think on that area, I think we're still trying to figure out how to uh, build the gap and how to uh, give them the right context, right communication. Okay. And, uh, where I think uh, majorly is that again we can do similar line there. Okay, how to reach out to him and what, what to, uh, what to, uh, how to communicate with him. Okay, these are the area I think. And I think that's where I think I will not say hits and misses at least in the new role because I think it's too early to say that. But I think in the earlier in the, in the similar thing that I said ki, in the hits like ki, okay, is the customer really want to be contacted? Okay, and then you reach out and again send him a communication. Okay, is the customer uh, uh, you know, want to buy a certain product or you want him to, you force him certain product. At that time, again, how you communicate, how you send that communication is what makes a difference. I think I'm still learning on those lines. Sure. Uh, uh, thanks for that uh, uh, candid admission that, you know. <laughs> so great. Uh, I'm sure you'll have more to share when we catch up next. Uh, Suchita, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, I'm just moving in sequence here. <laughs> As you know, I generally don't like keeping sequence, but I'm moving in sequence here. So, um, how is it, uh, have you contemplated or have you also kind of adapted or adopted a, an integrated platform? And how has it really been uh, jigging the whole uh, API bit? Uh, how has it worked for you? If you could just throw some light. Yeah, so, um, you know, of course, an um, integrated journey for any customer in terms of communication using SMS, email, WhatsApp, bot, voice is important. Uh, because uh, number one, you want to have a consistency that you want to maintain in the communication that you do. Uh, your journey would have some consistency. But I think primarily, you know, uh, when we are talking about an integrated uh, customer communication, we are trying to answer uh, that uh, very simple three W's maybe, that what do you want to communicate? Uh, when do you want to communicate? Who do you want to communicate? And then why you want to communicate, right? And then comes, of course, how that, what is the template that is to be used and, and uh, so on. Uh, but these are the primary four Ws which are very important. So I think uh, while created an integrated communication, we need to understand that there is one only one reason that we are trying to reach the uh, customer, right? There is always that devil, like uh, he said, that plays in our mind that we want to reach everyone and reach the goal. But uh, there is only one reason that we want to reach that should be very clear that do we want a sale conversion? Do we want to service the customer? Do we want to collect money from the customer? And what is that one KPI that we are trying to bring in? Right? That uh, uh, do we want to assist the customer and reach a solution? If we have these two things very clear and the time to action, of course, that how long did the customer take to reach that KPI? 
uh, if these three things we have, and uh, we have a proper A-B testing in place, and then a learning repository maintained out of that A-B testing, that's also very important. Then I think we have very clear answers to create that integrated journey. Who we want to reach through what kind of communication, SMS or WhatsApp, or, or and when do we want to reach, what kind of template do we want to use, and uh, how do we maintain that accessibility to the customer, personalization, and so on. So the entire integrated journey depends on uh, if we are clear on these answers or not. Sure, so have you found these answers? Yes, so uh, uh, like uh, I think Hitarth also mentioned, we, we also do a, a lot of A-B testing that we do. And, uh, and we try to find out that, you know, what kind of answers do we have and a learning repository over a period of time give us a proper answer uh, that, you know, a sample which we don't touch and a sample who we bombard with such kind of communication, what is the ultimate uh, answer that you're getting? Are you reaching that KPI and at what cost, of course? Right? Because you also need to understand that the cost that brings in that kind of uh, result that comes to us. So, so we do have a clear journey and roadmap. And on that, of course, a foundation API integrated journey is there. That if a customer has shown interest, let's say, on a digital or web, then what kind of a simple SMS would reach to him maybe. And then if the customer has completed the entire journey and just one step away from that agreement, then we would send a very pointed WhatsApp to that because we, we justify that kind of cost as well. And then maybe, you know, a, a email or a video would go where it would assist the customer throughout the journey. And uh, a, a voice bot would reach him when he's trying to complete the process and, you know, midway he's dropping off. So such kind of integrated journey is, of course, built with us. And uh, we are trying to leverage the A-B test and bring in more efficiency to this. Interesting. Uh, thanks for that, Sucheta. Uh, Suraj, um, as you know, shared by the panel here and co-panelists, and you've also spoken about this. I was looking you up, and one of the things you have also said quite vocally is the effectiveness of a CS in, uh, initiative can be gauged by the fact at, as to what kind of repeat business it can keep bringing in. So how have you kind of kept this mantra or this objective using CX tech, and uh, how have you worked towards getting this objective going for Ring? Uh, that's an important parameter for us that how much repeat business is being generated and if uh, and any CX initiative that we take uh, it's measured against the repeat business so uh, to start with uh, I would uh, break it into simple steps what we do is we uh, divide customers into different segments first of all it's an ongoing process that we do so for example a set of customers who have applied for a loan and have taken a loan versus a, a set of customers who applied for it but did not take it they dropped off in between there would be another segment who have just downloaded the app and done a small transaction like bill payment. And another set who have downloaded the app, looked, looked through the app, they do not do anything. Similarly, customers who have taken multiple loans back on back and other customers who have just taken one loan and they just went away. They are no longer uh, use, doing any repeat business. So we take these two competing segments and we create a set of questions for them and we get into a conversational interview with them. So it's not about, uh, of course, we do online surveys like NPS and CSAT, we look at these measures and uh, these are large in numbers. But when we do these uh, conversational surveys, what we look at is the quality of the survey rather than the quantity. So even if we get 30 uh, responses uh, from the survey, it's enough for us because these responses are like 10 minute, 15 minute conversations with the customers wherein we give some cashbacks to the customers for their uh, valuable time that they spend with us. We ask them some questions like, uh, why did you use the app? What was your uh, motivation behind downloading the app? What was the main reason for applying for the loan? Where did you use the money? Or what kind of other platforms and apps do you transact on? Like for example, what do you use for food delivery? What do you use for medicines? Do you go to a shop or do you uh, use an app? What do you use for shopping? How often uh, you use through online and offline? And also which other loan apps do you use? And why do you use these other apps or other credit cards or other banks? For example, he may say that I use HDFC credit card because I like this one part. I like the offer, I like the pricing, or I like the amount that they're giving. And that's how uh, we are. And finally, we ask him what kind of services or what kind of offers are you expecting out of Ring or out of Cash Tab, which would make you use it more often. 
and by taking these questions we come to know that what is the mentality of the customer and what kind of things he is looking for, what kind of communication, what kind of offers piss him off versus what kind of things make him happy. Of course, it won't be an exact uh, analysis because as Steve Jobs said, uh, you cannot ask a customer, you know, what you want from us. You need to create it. So, uh, because customers cannot predict future for you, they cannot tell you what new product to bring in. You have to uh, bring it. But at least they can tell you whatever you have created, is it good for them or not? So, that what's, that's what we do. And we combine this survey with customer service inputs. So we analyze our customer service data day on day, month on month, that what kind of queries do we get daily from different segment of customers. Then we match this customer service data for that segment with the survey results. And we come up with a set of milestones which need to be achieved to fix these problems. And, uh, and with these milestones, once these milestones are achieved, once we have done this fixing, like we have made the ch necessary changes, updates, after that, we measure the repeat business of that segment. And if there is an increase in repeat business, then those initiatives are of value to us. Otherwise, we need to drop them. So that's how we measure repeat business. And uh, I think a repeat business is the sole uh, important factor for us when it comes to CX. The rest all is secondary. Because if repeat business is not being generated, then uh, no matter how good scores or ratings or reviews you're getting, the customer experience is lacking somewhere. I think it's a it's a tough call between having numerous one-time transactions and having repeat business, right? I think that's a that's a game uh, on value versus volume. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I'll also, as as you spend a lot of money, because uh, as competition increases, the cost of acquisition increases of customer. So when you're spending so much money on acquiring the customer, if he's not giving you repeat business, then that cost is also wasted. Absolutely, hundred percent. I'll stay with you here. Uh, so uh, CX leaders are now looking at newer ways. The metrics changes with evolving uh, ways of looking at the CX journey with technology. So how are you really looking at what are those top three metrics you are looking at or will be looking at very keenly from your standpoint? So uh, number one is the usual metric that each one of each brands follow, which is the NPS and CSAT scores, which helps us know how the brand is preferred across customer segment. Second is uh, something known as customer effort score, which we measure based on, which we usually ask customers during the journey to understand how was the loan repayment, was it easy for them, how much effort it took them to make the loan repayment, to make a loan application, or to raise a complaint, in fact. So customer effort score is something that we look at. And third important for us uh, is the resolution tat of the complaints that come to us for different queries. And also along with the resolution tat, we measure very strongly, we measure how many times a customer is coming to us repeatedly in a month. Uh, so if he's just taken one loan from us and he has coming five times, then it's not a good sign. But if he's giving a repeat visa and he's coming five times, then that's a different story. He, he has some general queries. So we measure the time of uh, number of times a customer comes to us for queries, number of times he complains to us, and number of times he has to repeatedly come for the same thing again and again. So this is a metric. So NPS CSAT, customer effort score second, and third is the customer service repetition. Excellent. Uh, Dinesh, I'm moving this question to you. I think same like Suraj, first is NPS, that uh, our customer uh, liking the product. But I think in being an education business, what we first see is that the referral. Because in this case, uh, education was, is the oldest uh, thing and where you see that is actually customer liking a product and referring to their friends and families or their neighbors. That's the one where we see that, okay, are we getting enough referral coming from the customer that's, because then we are, we are selling a good product. Second thing, how engaged the student is with us. So. Is he coming, is like coming and say, okay, I want three class, four class in a week. So I think if we see that the classes are happening more and more, it means that customer is liking the product and he's uh, sticking and he want to continue with us. And this is the same matrix, this is a base matrix for us. And then we see if this matrix also correlate that if the customer is happy, then the referral increase. And if the both are happy, then the NPS increases. Excellent. Hitarth, moving this to you. Sure. So we have um, throughout the whole funnel journey throughout the whole customer experience journey, we have different scores which we measure at different parts of the funnel. So top of the funnel, we'll see that uh, what is the delivery rates, What I, am I reaching to the right segments or not? Uh, one of the measures over there is what is the quality index of the consumers as a brand, as a marketing engine you are attracting. Uh, then comes, let's say, what how effective your communication is. So the CTRs and the CVRs are the next uh, part of the funnel. 
And let's say once you've got the customer in your funnel, whether it's on your website or on your app or on any of the other places, uh, then it's more around the funnel health. Is, is the funnel behaving better or at the certain stable um, part? Sometimes it definitely has a different correlation with the kind of quality you have fed the funnel at the top. But uh, this is very uh, minutely tracked at our end. Uh, and once the consumer is on board, then we know that, okay, some segment of consumers will activate a little bit later and some will activate immediately. So what's that behavior over the month? Has that, cha has that been changed by February being a 28 days uh, month or not? Has that been changed by weekend being coming at the month end or, the, uh, or it being a week, day, month or not? So all of these patterns are also tracked at our end. And finally, it comes back into, let's say, which of these consumers are paying back and repeating the business. So honestly speaking, we do have our North Star metrics, which we chase as a company, as an organization, but every unit, every team, every part of the funnel will like break those down into your strategy and like chase individual uh, metrics to get the numbers done. Sure, so it's like a life cycle metrics. Completely, it's like, okay, um, and uh, maybe an another example of that would be, let's say I have acquired a consumer from one of the certain campaigns, now, what has been the activation rate of that particular consumer when I got them with a certain messaging or not? Now, this is something that we don't track on a daily basis, but in hindsight, when we look at the analysis that, okay, oh, this messaging is actually getting with the right set of consumers. And then changing your maybe six months or three months down the line strategy accordingly, that's something that again comes into the picture. Sure, it worked the first time but it may not work the second correct, time. Correct, correct, correct. So we consistently see that, okay, uh, these are the these are some new consumers who have fallen, uh, who have come, come into the funnel. Now the same messaging is not working beautifully well here, but it used to consistently work very well. Now what has happened? Can we try something else? So that again goes into the same part of it. We clearly know that, okay, if the CTRs are dropping, then your uh, communication is not as effective or you're not sending the communication at the right time, right? So quickly you can course correct. So that part we track. Great, uh, Shricheta, moving this to you. Yeah, so I think uh, quite similar. On the business standpoint, uh, the delivery rate and click rate is something that we track. And uh, most importantly, in terms of uh, business generation, funnel movement is something that is very key. Uh, that if I, have, uh, if I have communicated to the customer through SMS, let's say if to fill in more info or complete KYC, is he actually doing that or not? So the funnel movement that we track and ultimately that we are getting the end result of disbursement of a loan or not, uh, that is something we track. Since we are into a volume game, uh, of course, NPS and CSAT and maybe referral is not used as a means of measuring customer experience. Um, these are, of course, again, a business metric that we track, but I think that is a takeaway that I'll go along with, that this is also something we should track for sure. Great, yeah. Uh, thanks much for that. So, Parvati, uh, bringing you in here, you've heard, you know, quite a lot from the panelists here and uh, you gave in some download earlier in the conversation. So, how is Calera really kind of looking at and picking up these nuances of uh, customer asks and what exactly are you doing here? Right, so when we look at these patterns, right, with the answers that came in, each of the channels or each of communication methods have a different metric to track them. So, when it was just SMS, you could, you could send out a message, you know it's delivered, but you do not know if it converted, or unless you have an in, a link inserted, that's the max you can do. But now there are so many rich messaging channels, there's WhatsApp, and there's all these interactive media, these buttons you can put in, so you know where it translates as a, as a journey, right? So when we, when we work with customers at Calera, what we do is we, we really work closely to get into the ecosystem of that business, deep dive to understand what are your objectives, what are you trying to achieve, what regions do you want to operate in, because it, Trying to send an SMS in the US versus Middle East versus India, entirely different. Right? There's so many regulations that come in. So once we do that, it allows us to make recommendations, tailor our products in a way that fix, fits into your ecosystem, and that's how we usually tackle it. So even products at Calera are quite atomic in its nature, in the sense that if you just want to pick one channel, and that's for whatever reasons, maybe your transactional communication is through that channel, you can use it as is, integrate, have the data continue. So you might want to do a multi-channel approach for whatever reason. Maybe your segment, each segment responds differently. We are, 
We are actually the generation that has a set of people who are so used to picking up the phone and talking to a human at the other end, versus another generation that does not want to talk to people, it just wants to text and just move on, right? So it, it changes in that way. And then we come to omni-channel where it's about that business goal. I think we talked about conversion, we talked about optimizing the spend. Uh, there's so many metrics, and then it's not the channel specifically, but it's about how do we achieve that goal and what does it take to get there. So that's what Calera does. We, we provide those kind of services by working hand in hand with our customers because it is essentially a partnership that we look at, yeah. Great. Uh, uh, thank you so much for that. I think we've just about, you know, sort of kept up a uh, good time. We'll uh, kind of, you know, uh, halt here and figure out if anybody in the audience has questions. I think this is a good time to kind of ask, you know, direct our gaze towards the audiences here. Any questions? Any quick questions? Yeah, I saw raised a couple of raised hands. Can we go give them a mic here, please? Can you please introduce yourself uh, uh, and direct your question to anyone specifically in the panel? Hi, uh, my name is Amit Savant. Okay. You know, um, we spoke in this whole panel of quite a balanced discussion. But one thing which I want to ask is, how are we using this hyper-connected method, you know, to serve the underserved or the underbanked kind of a people? Because we have seen it's the private sector which brings in the change. When the government came up with Beam, it was not so popular. But the private sector is the one which made UPI the number one transaction machine. And a question next to it is, since we are working with these underserved or underbanked people, they don't have the same kind of a knowledge or an IQ. So what are we doing to protect them You know, in this hyper-connected world? And since the kind of a quantum of data that you guys are using, now, what kind of a regulation do you want to follow? See, for example, in an alcohol industry, we have a responsible drinking. You know, in a gaming industry, we have an irresponsible gaming. You know, what is the kind of a regulation that you would be looking forward to? Because I personally believe from a business perspective, the best regulation is a self-regulation. You know, you don't want a government body to come across and put those regulations. You already have an RBI and other bodies, you know, trying to you know, condition you to manage a certain thing in a certain way. Great. So, Hitath, do you want to take a go at this? Yeah. Sure. Um, I think your question is three-pronged. So, first is, uh, what are we doing to serve the underserved? So, I think the three of the panelists from the fintech industry, they would maybe stand aside me saying that fintech and neobanking as a as an industry whole is working with the banks and NBFCs uh, to reach out to segments which traditionally people are not really uh, comfortable to lend to. Now, it has its own plus and minuses, I won't deny that part, but that being said, see, um, traditionally how loans have been given in the industry, right? How um, we used to, our, our parents and maybe a yester generation, they used to walk to the bank and then there was a huge uh, process that used to be there. Now we have digitized that part. And slowly we are anyways reaching out to a lot of Bharat Janta, not just the urban Janta that already has the score. Uh, I'm talking about the credit score because generally it's a chicken and egg problem. You need a credit score to get a loan, but uh, you only get a credit score once you have a loan. So if somebody who's an NTC audience and that is basically new to credit, who they don't have any kind of history. So uh, how do lenders lend upon that particular segment? So a lot of analytics has been going on. Uh, it's not a quick fix, it's a journey that a lot of lenders will take over time. They'll get comfortable with data uh, that are giving some confidence that these segments seem to be, even, even though the direct data is not available, but with the alternate data, can I predict a little bit and take a chance on this segment and lend to them? So that's already there. I'm pretty sure a lot of my peers would be doing it. We are also doing it to a certain level. And that is how we are trying to reach out to the segment, which is not... Uh, directly served by banks and NBFCs right now. Uh, that's maybe the first part of the question. Uh, the second part is that, uh, yes, everybody is collecting a lot of data and that comes from the first question that, yes, you, uh, if you have to do the, uh, if you have to push the envelope, you will need some more data. Now, um, our regulator has been kind enough to uh, organize this space in the last, I would say, one year. Uh, there's been a lot of movement, a lot of uh, positive developments that have been done. There were many unorganized players who were, who were following some bad practices. A lot of them have been al already cleaned up. Everybody has been asked to get their things in order. And some of the uh, good folks, 
I'm, I'm thinking on the panel over here as well as us, we've been the first ones to comply. Uh, so regulator is already taking care of some of those uh, parts that are there. Uh, agreed self-governance is the mantra for being in the uh, right direction. Uh, and that is something that we take very seriously. Uh, even inside our um, company itself, there are uh, silos wherein only a few folks have access to a certain level of data. Now, that is just one part of the um, thing, but see how the data is being used. As long as the PII is not being misused uh, and any other data is helping you reach out to uh, uh, maybe optimizing the conver conversion or uh, a little bit more insight about the consumer, if that is happening, then in my personal opinion, I think that is a justifiable part. Purely because uh, if that data is not available, you can't serve that risky customer, you can't serve that underserved uh, segment, right? So again, for us also to make a difference, you uh, maybe a few nuggets would be required for us to walk that path. Did I answer your question or did I miss any? You were quite diplomatic, but you did answer the <laughs> question. You know, I can tell you from my perspective, you know, I come from a beacon motor space and I lead the marketing. So we have taken a conscious step that you know, we, we, we were the pioneers who start the BNPL product in an emerging category like a fashion. But we made a point that you know, if a customer has taken a product on a BNPL, and we know that the term of that BNPL EMI is three months or five months or six months, we do not approach that customer during that period to sell any more products because that's one way of, you know, keeping the regulation at your end. And there's a conscious step. And that has been followed because it's, it's a mandate which I have put into my system. So that is one way of be regulating ourselves so sure. that we don't push the customers into a debt trap. Sure, so what you're speaking about is something that's called a FOIR. Uh, and I think a lot of credit risk uh, teams already have that built in, uh, in however they are um, approving or rejecting a certain customer. Nobody would want that a customer should over leverage and eventually like maybe some of the other lenders also who have given them the loan, they'll also fall into the, they'll, they'll, the, the customer would, would default and the other lenders will also have a uh, bad experience. So this is something that is very basic in a certain credit risk uh, part of it. Uh, I'm not sure where you are referring to. I was to, surprised when there was a conversation happening where, you know, somebody said that, you know, he's taken loan from 10 players and out of the 10 players, you know, he's happy with one player. So that is where it gets a little tricky. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And that is something that we as an organization don't adhere to. A lot of consumers who are already over leveraged, we reject them. And I'm, I'm pretty sure. sure Can I add? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. I think, you know, we'll kind of just take some questions. I think we, sure. uh, you know, and not get into a loop over one question. Uh, my apologies, Suraj. I think we'll just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll come back to you on this. Yeah, I s we have time for just about another question or so. We'll gauge time. M many, many raised hands. I'm very excited. But we'll gauge the time very quickly. I think there was a gentleman there who raised his hand way back. Can we pass on the mic to him? And then we'll gauge the time. And we'll quickly see how we can take this forward. Uh, my apologies to everyone because I think we can, you know, in the interest of time, we'll see how best we can cover ground. Great enthusiasm. Very grateful for that. Hi, good evening. Uh, yes, please introduce yourself, please. Yeah, I'm Raman Verma. I'm a product director in a startup uh, that builds financial solutions for the uh, small and medium businesses in India. So, uh, enjoyed the conversation. What I would like the, this panel to reflect on is your perspective of uh, building trust in this uh, omni-channel, uh, hyper-connected communication system. Uh, there is a lot of noise, too many communications. Uh, most product offerings look alike from far. So what will distinguish these offerings is the first touch point in communications and building trust. Would like to understand how do basically we build trust in this lot of communication space and project uh, the similar experience as I have for somebody, the delivery milkman who comes in the morning consistently every day, and there are tens of them, right? and going to the same salon every time. So how do I build trust, go beyond the transaction that is happening right now and take my loan and get, get going, right? So that's my question. Sure, so uh, Suraj and Parvati, I think both of you can comment on this. So Suraj, you can go first and then Parvati can add on. Uh, your good name? Raman, okay. Raman, that's a nice question. So I would say, for uh, first of all, uh, 
the term loyalty has taken a, a hit in a few years, I would say, wherein customers are no more loyal to a particular brand. They are looking for the best offers they can get. Of course, you'd be loyal to a brand uh, like for uh, even e even if you're purchasing a car or you're purchasing a loan, uh, uh, customers are much more uh, less loyal right now. So the so attempting to get earn loyalty of a customer would be time wasted. I would say uh, we would fo we we focus more on getting. As I said, we need to get repeat business. And for getting repeat business, it's necessary to understand whether we are meeting the customer's core needs or not. If you are meeting the customer's core needs, the trust and loyalty automatically builds. But also we need to be ready that customer would at some point of time move on if he's uh, given a better offer from a competitor. So. Uh, when it comes to building trust, what we do at Ring is, apart from sending just communications on marketing front, we also have a very robust communication on educating customers on how to mitigate fraud, or how to report a fraud, or how to uh, report any grievance to uh, the company as well as to the regulator. So this gives the customer the feeling that, okay, this customer, uh, this company is not just giving me loans, it also tells me what is the right thing to do, what is the wrong thing to do, and also uh, if there is any grievance of the customer, we upfront reach out to them to solve it. And uh, that's how we build trust. Because uh, as I told in my last statement that uh, customer, usually we have seen customer taking uh, loans from 10 companies. We have seen that out of these 10 companies, there are usually only two or three companies that are genuine and licensed. And the rest of the companies should be just uh, unorganized players in the market who, uh, who have given loan to the customer and the customer is stuck with them now. So, uh, when a customer chooses a platform, he wouldn't have trust at on day one. It has to be built over a period of time and it has to be built by giving the right customer service as well as by educating him on uh, fraud mitigation as well as cyber crime. And this is what we do regularly. Great, Parvati, I think specifically to what uh, uh, Raman asked about all product offerings looking alike and right. so what are the differentiators? I think that would be apt for you to comment yep, on yep. that part. So, uh, when we look at these brands, right, the brands that we work with, there are ways to identify them as trusted, authentic, and there are processes in place to make sure they're registered, right? So if it's SMS, you have your sender ID that's registered with the regulatory body. If it's WhatsApp, you have the business accounts that's approved, and you know there are messages that come to you through, a, through an authorized channel. And you have your domains when it comes to email. So each channel has these checks in place, and as a CPAS provider, we work with our businesses to make sure how do you ensure you are trusted as a business when you reach out to your customer. Now, this is one aspect, right? As a brand, how do you ensure your communication is always going through a, re uh, a reliable sort of uh, messaging format? The other thing is, and I think we touched upon it a bit, about opt-in and opt-outs, right? If, if a customer is looking for a brand or a service or something, there is an intention that they're coming to you towards. They're looking for a loan. They're looking to purchase a certain product. So if you respect that intention and that transparency is there between our platforms to know that this customer came in with this intent, which means they've opted in to receive a certain kind of message, and then they have the flexibility and option to opt out when they need to discontinue the conversation or they've achieved what they need to. So these are the ways as technology that we can solve and make sure there's transparency for us across as a business and thus enable loyalty to the end customer at the end of it, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I saw, yeah, right in the front, we will permit this one last question here. Can we move the mic here, please? And Hi, uh, very insightful discussion. Um, okay, uh, so all of you off. Please primarily. introduce yourself. Uh, yes. My name is Satish. I'm yes. from Brand Studio Lifestyle, a tech enabled house of fast fashion brands. Okay. Uh, we're a digital first uh, house of fast fashion brands. So, my question is basically um, you know, you are from the uh, fintech, significantly the, the larger uh, set of panelists, and um, which are typically larger gestation uh, periods, right? When you're, when you're prospecting a customer, the gestation is much longer. Um, and uh, so if I, if, I, if I were to divide this into, let us say, the customer experience part of it, which is the various messaging channels that you will use or communication channels that you will use to communicate for servicing and building trust and building relationship versus, let us say, prospecting itself and how prospecting can combine, now this is very one-to-one -one communication primarily, this whole context of this conversation was, but it has to be complementary with your one-to-many, which is your uh, paid advertising, uh, 
um, or any other means of marketing, you know, the larger marketing, how does that complement uh, your one-to-one -one and your personalization in a prospecting scenario, not in a, uh, you know, a servicing or a remarketing scenario? Great. Uh, so, Chita, do you want to, you know, kind of attempt this? Yeah. Okay, sure. So, uh, you know, uh, I think from uh, my understanding standpoint of the industry in terms of fintech is that uh, we will communicate uh, with the customer once the journey starts. Prospecting is not something where, you know, we want to bombard the customer and, and bring it to our journey and then because uh, the serviceable population for a financial service is, is huge. We wouldn't like to reach everyone and understand that, hello, you know, do you want a loan? Uh, once we get the customer through uh, maybe a digital marketing or, or through our partners when the customer is actually seeking a loan, we would just reach out, knock the door and understand that, you know, do you want a loan? Then maybe a very small SMS would work because the customer is in dire need of a loan. Uh, we would let the customer decide that uh, are we the one who th they want to take a loan from or not. And once the customer downloads the app maybe or starts the journey and then is when we start interacting with various other modules of communication which can be WhatsApp or which can be a chatbot or which can be a voice. But for prospecting standpoint, I don't think you know that we would just jump to the entire population and, and just uh, wave. Uh, that would be an acquisition strategy which will, build, which will be built on if the customer has actually inquired for a loan on our app or, or on any digital platform or to our any loan marketplace maybe and the lead has come to me then. Sure, Hita, do you want uh, to add maybe something? I, yeah, I'll just add a couple of points over here. <clears throat> See, from a prospecting standpoint, I think uh, partnerships can really uh, make a difference, right? Uh, from your brand magnet, you are attracting a lot of consumers which will go through your usual channels. Uh, but leveraging some high value pros uh, prospects, you can easily do by partnering with folks who already have those kind of customers. Uh, now again, there will be a certain funnel, but brands coming together, some alliances that are there, some kind of a uh, high value deal. And maybe one of the examples of this could be Times Prime in my personal opinion. Uh, what they've done is they've accumulated like some 10 brands together they are all giving some certain special price and at a certain subscription, uh, the user can get a value from multiple brands in one shot, right? Now that is a fantastic example of all of these brands, if they had to acquire this one single customer, they would have had to maybe do a lot of rigmarole. But some, some kind of a uh, partnership like this, if that, that can be tracked, this is a little bit difficult to do in uh, finance because uh, finance generally has a very tight funnel. It's not a quick, uh, buy and move on, right? There needs to be a journey where consumer has to do KYC, etc., etc., etc. That is the reason why we don't see a lot of these examples in finance, uh, but there are quite a few uh, alliances like these. If somebody is, let's say, um, taking some kind of a purchase, heavy purchase, right? And I think Bajaj has been doing this for quite some time. There is a certain heavy purchase that's happening. There is a certain insurance that gets added to it, right? Uh, and consumer finds the value because they are purchasing a high value uh, goods over there and if that gets damaged, they are okay to let's say uh, pay a little bit premium and go ahead. So th these are some of the ways how finance uh, goes ahead in prospecting some new consumers. Sure, does that answer your question? Uh, it does, but uh, my, my uh, uh, because I'm from fashion, right, my, my decision making is very, very quick. It's very impulsive, it's not thought through, it's not desperate. See either, I mean for somebody who's looking for financial product, product is either desperate for money at that point of time or they've thought through a long-term plan and they want to, uh, you know, uh, add up to what they've already saved to buy a product or, I mean, when I'm saying borrowing and all of that. But it's finance, it's, uh, I mean, in fashion, it's impulsive, it's now, it's something you don't even know you need, right? Uh, so there's a different approach. So, I mean, we can talk over this on the networking. Completely agree. See, it's good that people are not impulsive in uh, finance <laughs> because that keeps them under certain guardrails. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, great. I think in the interest of time, we should be calling this to a close. Uh, I think more interesting conversations can go offline, you know. We will spend more time uh, outside networking over dinner and uh, cocktails. So, uh, let's move this there. So, thanks a ton. I think uh, 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 valuable time spent, lots of insights uh, garnered from Suraj, from Parvati, from Sucheta, from Dinesh and from Hitat. Thank you so much and thanks a ton for the questions as well.